The Texas Association of Museums TAM Connects recordings highlight what's happening inside and around the TAM community. Short and succinct, this program lets you hear about what is top of mind at peer institutions and beyond. TAM's mission is to strengthen the Texas museum community through collaborations, connections, professional development, and advocacy. Learn more about TAM membership at www.texasmuseums.org. Hello, and welcome to our TAM Connects broadcast. In this pro program, you'll, we will sit down with a TAM member to discuss the projects and ideas they are working on now and into the future. I'm your host, Alex Freeman, TAM's Executive Director. I am joined today by Joy Simpson, Associate Business Insurance at Higginbotham, a TAM business member. Over the next few minutes, we're going to learn more about Simpson and how her work intersects with the greater museum community. Let's get started. Welcome to the program, Joy. Thank you, Alex. Happy to be here. All right. So tell me a little bit about how you became involved with insurance for museums and related nonprofits. Sure. So it all started uh, when I was a kid. I had an interest in art, and I was thinking about this the other day. My interest was first peaked when I saw Van Gogh's Starry Night, and it was so much different than a lot of the art I'd seen up until that point. So um, after that, I took art through high school. Um, and then I worked at an insurance agency, uh, working through my undergrad and graduate degrees. And when I finished my graduate degree, I decided that I wanted to stay in insurance. So uh, I decided to sort of merge my two uh, fields that I had uh, expertise in and go into insurance specifically for fine arts organizations and collections, museums, and, and the like. Great. What trends are you currently seeing in the insurance world, specifically as it relates to art, fine art, nonprofits, and museum spaces? Sure. So uh, one of the big trends right now in insurance um, in general, but I think specifically to this field, is online quoting. So traditionally, when a museum needed to buy a policy uh, for their collection, they would probably fill out a paper application and fax or email that to an insurance agent who would then fax or email that to an insurance carrier, sort of a very manual kind of time consuming process. Um, these days, a lot of it is turning to online quoting or rating. So it's a lot more like buying uh, car insurance online. So you go online to a website, you input your information, and voila, you have uh, a quote and you can even sometimes buy your policy right then and there. Okay. Uh, in, a, in an earlier conversation, you mentioned cyber liability becoming an increasingly important topic. How is this impacting the cultural sector? Yeah, so in the past, it was that um, cyber criminals were targeting companies that had a lot of credit card information on file, which makes sense. Um, and they were really the, the targets for cyber attacks. Um, right now, cyber, uh, credit cards have become much less valuable. And so cyber criminals are turning to other means um, of attack and they're targeting almost any sort of organization, whether um, it's someone that has credit card information on file or not. So a couple of ways that these attack, attacks work. First of all, there's a lot of cyber extortion going on, which is essentially a cyber criminal will hack into your network um, and, and take control of it and not release it back to you until you wire transfer them a certain amount of money. Um, so it's, yeah, it can be very bad. Um, and obviously anyone's network can, you know, they can take control of anyone's network. It doesn't matter what type of operation you have. Uh, the second thing that we're seeing a lot of right now is social engineering. And this is when a cyber criminal will pose as someone else, um, whether that's your boss asking you to wire transfer some money, um, or an employee or something like that. Um, and these attacks have become very sophisticated and a lot of people, even that are very tech savvy, a lot of times can't um, can't tell that they're fakes. So, an example from one of my clients recently, they had a cyber criminal email them posing as an employee, asking for their direct deposit bank to be changed for their paycheck. Um, and so they went ahead and changed that direct deposit bank and uh, deposited that money right into the uh, cyber criminal's bank account. So. Um, these can be can be bad situations, and and you just want to make sure that you have coverage for that sort of thing. Uh, 
Tam has been exploring the topic of gender equity over the past year and related the related Me Too movement is impacting employment practices liability. Can you explain what you're seeing there? Yeah, absolutely. So we have certainly seen a rise in sexual harassment claims since the Me Too movement. Um, and there's a policy called employment practices liability, as Alex mentioned, that does cover uh, both defense, so attorney's fees and that sort of thing, as well as damages, if there are any damages awarded to the claimant. Um, we And employment practices liability also applies to claims for discrimination, um, wrongful termination, sort of anything that an employee might claim against their either current or former employer. Um, and on that note, it's it's very important, obviously, to have coverage in place if you do have this type of claim, but ideally having really good risk management techniques with your employees and avoiding these claims altogether is the best is the best sort of route. So um, anything you can do to have um, an inclusive and safe work environment for all of your employees is is really important. So making sure you have um, updated employee handbooks that have very specific um, information about harassment, discrimination, things like that. Um, having internal harassment training for every level of the company, um, and then also having inclusion and diversity training is a wonderful place to start. Okay, great. Well, thank you for sharing your expertise uh, to our members. Any last thoughts to leave them with? Yeah, one helpful anecdote that's just sort of an example of the way that uh, online quoting or rating has been helpful to my clients uh, recently. I was working with a historical organization that was having an exhibit of antique firearms, and they were borrowing three firearms from three different collectors, and they wanted to purchase an individual policy for each one of those firearms just to kind of keep everything separate. And because of online rating, we were able to get that done for them really quickly and also really inexpensively uh, because there's no minimum premium per policy. So they paid a very low cost um, for each individual policy and it was really you know, easy to, easy to get done for them. To wrap up today's program, I wanna thank Joy Simpson from Higginbotham on behalf of TAM. If you have questions about what you heard today or wanna learn more about TAM membership, please reach out to me, alex at texasmuseums.org. Thank you all for joining us today. Goodbye. Bye.